is a discussion on legal expenditures, legal fees. And uh, I want to turn that over to you, Arthur. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, I brought up the uh, the subject of legal fees because we had. Um, an incident um, or incidents regarding the uh, Board of Health and the um, the expenses that are related to um, having the problems that we've had and I found out that the town had spent one hundred and fifteen thousand four hundred and ten dollars last year in legal fees for thirty eight hours six hundred thirty eight hours of work of which no dollars, zero dollars, were spent on behalf of the Board of Health. They obviously run a tight ship and, and did not need to uh, involve town council in anything they did last year. As of this year, in the first two months, we have spent $5,792.50, and that's only up through the beginning of August. We, had, we don't have the uh, month of August in here yet. Uh, nor do we have September. Um, something is, is radically wrong, and I think we discussed this uh, several months ago, that um, we had somebody who ran for public office with a personal agenda, and their personal agenda has cost um, almost $6,000 in legal fees and um, uh, fees for um, police details and so forth. Uh, I'm going to ask the board to support a letter uh, to Gail McSweeney to um, draw it out as, as the sense of the um, members of the Board of Selectmen that uh, she take her um, personal agenda someplace else and that she tender her resignation. And um, I would ask that in the form of a motion. Uh, we have, uh, Arthur has made a motion, as he has described. Do I have a second on Arthur's motion? I second the motion for discussion. Seconded by Matthew. You want to have a question, Mr. Matthew? I just have a few comments to make. Uh, and first of all, I was a man member at Guru Therapy a few months ago. However, I would like to say, to state to the record, that if the two sides had come together without legal representation and try to work these things out between themselves, I think that would be for the best. I think it would be wonderful, but the reality is that that's not going to happen. Uh, my understanding of uh, some of these legal bills is uh, uh, we had some issues with open meeting law violation complaints. And uh, but Arthur is right, they all sent it around the Board of Health and uh, they've continued and we've had additional uh, work done with our attorney. It isn't just one time and uh, those costs do add up. Uh, that is why we have a, a legal department, however, and the town does have to defend itself against uh, complaints of open meeting laws. But, then again, you go to the source of uh, what causes all this, and uh, I, I would have to agree that uh, uh, there does seem to be some personal issues involved here, and they don't have anything to do with taking care of the day-to-day -day business at the Board of Health. And uh, I'm really hopeful that uh, this has come to an end, but I cannot state so that, that I actually know that it's going to come to an end. I'm, I'm hoping that it's coming to an end. Uh, and I think we have answered with our legal expenditures uh, questions that have been raised and um, I'm, I'm hopeful that you know we're done with that. Uh, the chairman of the Board of Health has stated that if an item is not on the agenda, and she's right about this, uh, it does not have to be taken up. And if, it, and if it doesn't concern a resident of Pembroke bringing Board of Health business 
to the forefront to be discussed and solved, uh, then it's not going to be discussed. So I'm hopeful on that end. But as I as I stated, uh, I have no inside information. I'm only I'm only hopeful. Well, in a budget where we're scraping for pennies uh, virtually every year, the potential to spend twenty thousand dollars is not out of the realm of possibility, and that represents a lot of money uh, that could be spent elsewhere for public safety equipment in the school department, in um, the DPW. I mean, we've got places that we could spend that money, and um, it just seems to me to be ridiculous to um, try to ignore this and hope it'll go away because it, it's very clear after, um, you know, four months, five months that it's not going away, that it's um, just accelerating. And um, I think, you know, as the leaders of the community, um, we need to step forward and, and say enough is enough. Anyone else have any comments they'd like to make? Jan? Yeah, I do. Um, this is, it's been a tumultuous time uh, that Mrs. McSweeney has brought upon uh, the board herself and the town. Um, and she had, she had some questions in her own mind that, uh, that needed to be answered. Uh, some of them were valid. Some of them I thought were, um, uh, as you phrase it, Arthur, uh, uh, an axe to grind from something maybe previous employment. Uh, so we've been going through this time trying to answer her questions as they can. And it's cost money. Uh, to my knowledge, everything that, that I know of that she's asked has been answered. I don't think, I'm not sure if it's all satisfactory to her. But I think the town has done the right thing in answering every one of her, her questions. Um, so I'm hoping, as Lou is, that this is over. And we'll see where we go from here. Hopefully they just get down to business, roll up their sleeves, and do the business that uh, she and the rest of the board were elected to do. And I'd, I'd like to afford her that opportunity. And the reason I say that is, a town or two away, about a year or so ago, uh, there was a recall for, for a selectman. And I just think that when the voters have voted for you, unless you do something completely out, outlandish or illegal, that's the time to push someone out of office. Um, from what so I, I disagree with trying to push someone out of office unless they, they've gone to that extreme. Uh, I have to admit that uh, the outlandish portion, Gail's pushing the envelope on that, uh, in some people's minds probably even beyond, uh, but I'd like to afford her the opportunity to settle into a position and do the right thing. I think you can only Bill? give so many chances. Oh, yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with that statement at all. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I would really like to agree with Arthur um, on this because this has been going on for a long time. Um, and it's good that we brought this up and had some discussion about it because this has not just happened since this person was elected and put into this position. Um, this uh, attorney's fees and legal fees um, were going on for quite a while while she was working there. Um, and she didn't like the answers that she received from the then police chief, the uh, district attorney, uh, attorneys for the town. Um, I don't particularly think that it's going to end either. I, I think that it's probably going to continue, but there has to be parameters set by the chairman of the board that says that either she can bring items up or she cannot bring items up. Um, if she puts, it's up to the chairperson to recognize the talk about a particular subject or something that 
somebody wants to bring up. You, you just can't go out of these to, tonight if I wanted to talk about some particular thing. You just can't do that unless it's on the agenda. So um, I also uh, would really like to think that this is over. And um, maybe if we could put a, uh, a time limit on it that if this is to continue for uh, the next month, then I would be willing to sign what Arthur wants to sign. Um, but I don't really think that that's going to make a difference to her anyway. Um, but I would like to give her the opportunity that even if we send a letter from the board as a, as a group saying that um, we're not happy with the way the things are going in this particular office and either um, you straighten it out and, and get it straightened out now or then we're going to make recommendations uh, and give them a certain amount of time to straighten it out and take care of it. Um, I, I don't think there's been any parameters set that way to say that we're very unhappy. I have no problem sending a letter saying that we're unhappy with the way things are going and it's not good for the town uh, to be fighting the way that they are in the office there. Um, let them all know that, that we're at the point that we want to try to do something about it. And uh, I don't know how that would be addressed in a letter, but um, you know, it's a warning. I mean, everybody's entitled to a warning, so I wouldn't have a problem signing a letter that indicated that this was a warning letter, and if it continues after 30 days, then we'll try to take whatever action we can to have it removed. I can compromise down to that. I mean, Dan has tried, you know, approaching her at a meeting, and, um, you know, I give him an A for effort, and, um, you know, it, it didn't prove to go anywhere in terms of bearing uh, great fruit, but um, we, um, we, we need to address it. I mean, it, it's just, it's ridiculous. But if I may. I have no issue with sending a letter of uh, explaining how unhappy we are that uh, the way the board is operated, the way she is operated with the board. Uh, the one thing that that I, I would like to push back against is uh, any any talk of what we'll do in the future, and the reason, not just for this case, because. If, if, if we are unsatisfied with an elected member of a board, and even if this one is, is uh, some people see it as egregious, even even with this member, this board of selectmen will be seen by other boards as that we're ready to go down a slippery slope of threatening any any board member of any. Any board in town, planning board, assessors, BPW, you name it. Uh, so that's something we have to be careful of. Uh, even though this is a one specific instance, and it's you could say that the uh, the thought is is uh, well founded, but the perception can be from other boards and committees it can be seen as a threat. As, a, as an overstep of, of, uh, of power by the Board of Selectmen. You, you, you can see that perception, can't you? Or see other people perceiving it that way? Well, I think we're addressing a hostile work environment, and um, I think that's part of our job. See, see now, there's a, there's a point that you can help validate uh, a, a letter of reprimand. So I... I I would support a letter of reprimand or, um, or uh, acknowledgement that the board, that this board sees that the board of health is running dysfunctionally because of one member and we want them to straighten their act up, straighten her act up particularly. I don't have an issue with that. I just want to stop short of what will happen next. That's what I that's the compromise I would like to see, if it's possible. And I might not have the votes on that end, but that's that's what I would like to see. 
precedent for the board to uh, to write letters of money or whatever you may say, uh, to write letters that uh, are unhappy with somebody's conduct, the way that it's taken place. Uh, we give that right to every town employee. Uh, we call them in for a hearing and talk to them and uh, advise them about what rules and regulations that they are under and what they should be doing. Unfortunately, I don't know what rules and regulations she falls under other than that she's voted in by the townspeople. I don't know if there's, if there's rules and regulations for, um, for the Board of Health. And if there isn't, then maybe there should be. Um, and if they do violate that, then, uh, then uh, at least a warning could be uh, imposed. And if the action continues, then uh, whatever we need to do to to follow up on it. Can I have some a suggestion that um, Arthur worked with the town administrator for a week and uh, bring a, a drafted letter to us for approval? Um, so it says what? You're creating a hostile work environment and um, not supportive of it? Well, as, as Bill mentioned, he's not, not sure of um, the way they operate and what laws that they operate under. And we want to make sure that the letters is, is, is as strong as it can be, but within the bounds of our jurisdiction. Yeah, I mean, clearly we don't have um, authority over another elected board in terms of uh, who serves as their members. But I don't think we have to sit still and support uh, somebody who is creating a disturbance at virtually every meeting. And it's cost us now we're over six thousand dollars in legal expenses and, and um, uh, police detail fees. I mean, it, it's it's crazy, and we can use that money in other places. And I want to stop it too. Anyone else have any comments? Uh, we have a motion on the floor by Arthur and seconded by Matthew. Uh, well, there's a, um, as I hear it, is a substitute motion from Dan to um, have uh, Mr. Thorne and I address a letter uh, for the board's approval, and um, I would go along with that if the uh, board sees fit to um, vote it that way, that um, we need to nip this and, and address it immediately. So. I, I think that's um, a solution that, that works for everybody. So are you, is this a substitute motion, Nathan, or do you want to well, I'm, move I'm forward Dan. with your original I, motion? I agree with that, sir. Sure. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll substitute that in. So we have a substituted motion uh, eliminating the first one that Arthur made. Do we have a second on this second. motion? Seconded by Bill. Any other questions or additions? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of the substitute motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, I rule it unanimous. Thank you.